Hello there, my dears. Get ready for lesson 193. This is one of the really wonderful ones. I have a few all colored up with yellow highlighter. This is one of them in my All Falling Apart book. <laughs> all things are lessons God would have me learn. So God doesn't know about learning, yet his will extends to what he doesn't understand. In other words, he's going to make sure we have everything we need. <laughs> in that he wills the happiness his son inherited of him be undisturbed, eternal, and forever gaining scope, eternally expanding in the joy of full creation, eternally open and wholly limitless in him. Okay, that's his will. And thus, his will provides the means to guarantee that this is done. Even here, he has no idea what's going on. So God sees no contradictions, yet his son believes he sees them. Thus, he has a need for one who can correct his erring sight and give him vision that will lead him back to where perception ceases. Remember, perception is the, what I am involved with when I hear and see and smell and touch here in our hallucination. So God doesn't perceive at all, yet it is he who gives the means by which this perception are still seeing separate forms, is made true and beautiful enough to let the light of heaven shine upon it. It is he who answers what his son would contradict. In other words, this pretending like we're guilty business, we're contradicting our innocence, and he keeps this innocence forever safe, no matter what we may pretend is so. These are the lessons God would have you learn. His will reflects them all, and they reflect his loving kindness to the son he loves, each one of us, seemingly each one of us. So each lesson has a central thought, the same in all of them. Only the form is changed with different circumstances and events, with different characters and different themes, apparent but not real. They are the same in fundamental content, and it's this. Forgive, and you will see this differently. It certainly is true that distress doesn't appear to be but unforgiveness, yet that's the content underneath the form, no matter what the form is. It is this sameness that makes learning sure because the lesson is so simple it cannot be rejected in the end. No one can hide forever from a truth that's so obvious that it appears in countless forms and yet is recognized as easily in all of them. If you want to see the simple lesson here, forgive and you will see this differently. If you let go of grievances, this means you've got a different set, so to speak, of thoughts in your mind. And with a different set of thoughts, you're going to have a different outer world because thoughts and things are intimately exactly the same. So this forgive and you will see differently business are the words that the Holy Spirit speaks in all your tribulations, all your pain, all suffering, regardless of its form. These are the words with which temptation, being all tangled up in the world, ends and guilt, abandon, is revered no more. These are the words that end the dream of sin and rid the mind of fear. These are the words by which salvation, peace, and safety comes to all the world. Those sound like very high-powered words if they can accomplish all that. <laughs> so shall we not learn to say these words when we're tempted to believe that pain is real and death becomes our choice instead of life? Don't you think we should learn to say these words when we have understood their power to release all minds from bondage? These are the words that give you power over all events that seem to have been given power over you. Once you decide, I'm letting go of grievances, then the game's over. You will see them rightly when you hold these words in full awareness. And don't forget these words apply to everything you see or what some other brother sees amiss, which means he sees them incorrectly. So how can you tell when you're seeing wrongly, incorrectly, or someone else is? If someone else is failing to perceive the lesson that he should learn, 
Does pain seem real in the perception? If it does, be sure the lesson is not learned. And there still remains an unforgiveness hiding in the mind that sees the pain through eyes the mind directs. Remember, the pain is an interior process primarily. So God does not want you to suffer like this. He would help you forgive or to release yourself. His son doesn't remember who he is, and God would have him not forget his love and all the gifts his love brings with it. So as much as we keep trying to forget, love keeps trying to have us remember. (laughs) So would you now renounce and give up your own salvation? Would you fail to learn the simple lesson that heaven's teacher, the Holy Spirit, sets before you that all pain can just disappear and God can be remembered by all creation. So all things are lessons God would have you learn. He would not leave one unforgiving thought without correction, not one thorn or nail to hurt his holy son in any way. He would ensure that his holy rest remain untroubled, serene, without a care, in an eternal home that cares so deeply for him. And he would have all tears be wiped away with not one remaining yet unshed and none just waiting their appointed time to fall. For God has willed that laughter should replace each tear and that his son be free again. So we're going to attempt today to overcome a thousand seeming obstacles to peace in just one day. Let mercy come to you more quickly and don't try to hold it off another day, another minute, or another instant. Time was made for this, for this decision. Use it today for what its purpose is. Morning and night, devote what time you can to serve its proper aim. That's time's proper aim. And don't let this time be less than meets your deepest needs. So give all you can and then give a little more. For now we would arise in haste. Oh, let's get on with this and go unto our Father's house. We've been gone too long, and we don't want to linger here anymore, no longer than necessary. And as we practice, let's think about all the things we tried to save to settle by ourselves and keep apart from healing. So let us give them all to him who knows the way to look on them so they will disappear through forgiveness. Truth is his message. Truth his teaching is. His are the lessons God would have us learn, not the lessons we would have us learn. So each hour, spend a little bit of time today and in the days to come in practicing the lesson in forgiveness in the form established for the day and try to give it application to the happenings this hour has brought, so that the next one is free of the one before. The chains of time are easily unloosened in this way. Let no one hour cast its shadow on the one that follows. In other words, don't keep bringing judgments forwards. And when that one goes, just let everything that happened in its course go with it. Thus will you remain unbound in peace eternal in the world of time even. In other words, just keep letting go everything that happens. Don't carry it forward as a grievance. So this is the lesson love would have you learn. There is a way to look on everything that lets it be to you another step to him and to salvation of the world. To all that speaks of terror, answer like this, I will forgive, I will let go of grievances and judgments, and this is going to disappear. To every apprehension, every care, every form of suffering, repeat these selfsame words. And then you hold the key that opens heaven's gate, brings the love of God the Father down to earth at last to raise it up to heaven. God will take this final step himself, so don't deny these little steps he asks you take to him. Such a beautiful lesson. The idea that every single problem we've got gets resolved by letting go of our judgments because all of our problems are our judgments made manifest. We can't say this 
too many times. Have a wonderful day letting go one hour after the other. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Bye.